Welcome back YouTube, I had no idea Intel was going to prove me so right. What I am talking about is Coffee Lake. Coffee Lake really is the epitome of what a company will do when they are scared of losing market share. What you need to look at is, is the date of release or the date that we are going to get the new information on Coffee Lake is now right around the corner. Apparently August 21st. We're going to get our look at Coffee Lake. Well, that means, you know, great for us. We're going to get a processor that can actually do something Intel should have been putting out years ago, as far as the core count goes, across the entire range. You know, starting off with four cores as being the i3s, having a six core part as an i5, and a six core part as an i7. They should have been there at least two years ago, if not at least four years ago. But that's great and all. But what does that also mean? That also means that Cabby Lake was useless. They put out a product they never, or they did initially intend to have represent them. But when they realized, hey, look, we haven't done anything in the last few years to actually push technology forward, but our competitor is doing something now, to push technology forward, we need to hurry up and uh, play catch up. Intel should have never had to play catch up. They should have known and they should have put out the best product they could at the price point they should have. Even back then, even without competition, they should have moved and strived to move the market forward. Not put out $2,000 almost 10 core processors that no one in the real market can afford but rather they should have focused on what is our entry point? Where is the entry point to the market and where should it be? How powerful should these things be? AMD bet a long time ago on the bulldozer architecture because they saw that software should be using more cores. It should become multi-threaded. And Intel to a point also bet on this when they came out with hyper-threading. That was kind of the point in hyper-threading. Get more performance out of fewer cores, but have it act like more cores. But my point is, is for business, you know, we've been kind of just left in the dark. If we didn't need high-end servers, or didn't need servers, period, we got left in the dark on a lot of things. And one of the most important things we got left on the dark on is actual business computers. For years, business computers have been re relying on the i5s. Most of your business oriented computer sales are going to include an i5 or a locked i7. Well, this has really kind of sucked for businesses because we have been stuck with a four core, four thread part, or possibly a four core, eight thread part if we wanted to shell out a lot of money. Because when you're talking about businesses, you're not talking about replacing one computer. You're not talking about upgrading a computer. In the personal scale, yes, you upgrade one computer. You have your computer at home. That is the computer you upgrade. You might have two or three. You know, that's a couple thousand dollars, five thousand dollars max to upgrade a couple computers at the house. Well, even take a small business that relies on 20, 30, 40 computers. And you'd be surprised at how small this business really is that relies on that. Uh, if you've ever had, I don't know, a lawyer. Everybody in that office has at least one computer. If you've ever had an accountant, everybody in that office has a computer. One accountant could have 20 different bookkeepers working for him. Well, that's 21 computers. Oh, yeah, we forgot the receptionist. That's 22 computers. And oh yeah, we forgot all the other people who were going to work there doing side jobs, the office manager, people like this. You know, the computer count goes up. And all of a sudden that, oh, it might have been about five grand to upgrade to the latest and greatest line for personal use. Now you're talking about 50 grand. Now you're talking about 100 grand. Because these business computers typically start off $1,500 to $2,000 a piece. Why do they start off that much? Because of the warranties that businesses want with them. 
there's a big difference between the Dell you buy as a person and the Dell they sell or lease to a business. And one of the big differences is the warranty, the usability of this computer, and the guarantee that this computer will stay usable. But that's on a side note. Back to Coffee Lake. Coffee Lake is going to shut out Cabby Lake. And Cabby Lake's been out for, what, seven months? Six months? Realistically, uh, I believe Cabby Lake came out at the very beginning of this year. So, you know, it hasn't had a full year's run. But because Intel got scared, and they got scared of Ryzen and AMD's new products, Intel went ahead and shut down Cabby Lake for the most part, and they're going to go ahead and introduce Coffee Lake. Well, this is great. It really is. And I am excited to see Coffee Lake come out. I'm not excited to see the price tags I believe it's going to release at because you can pretty much guarantee it's going to be a few dollars more given Intel's pricing schemes over the last few years. Chip for chip, it's going to be 5 to 7% more minimum than the KB Lake counterpart. So that'd be the 7700K versus the 8700K at 5 to 10%. And that's probably your minimum price range. But the reason why I'm excited about this, the reason why I am, I am very happy to see competition coming back into this marketplace and for businesses is they're finally going to have to code every product software-wise for multi-threaded use. You heard me right. They are finally going to have to take the time to make sure all products are coded to use, be used as a multi-threaded application. Because it increases the speed and the productivity of the software by a lot more than people realize when someone gets around to coding them this way. And for those of you who are listening who may be gamers, that also means your video games will be coded sooner rather than later for multi-core use. And I mean four cores and beyond. The reason why software hasn't really been moving towards that for the last few years is Intel's fault. The i3 series, what Intel considers the entry-level series of processors, yeah, that's always been like two cores. Last few generations, two cores, hyper-threading, might equal out to four threads. Well, because it's only two physical cores, you can guess what the software industry did. Well, we only need single core or to be coded for two cores. We don't need to worry about coding for four cores because your average computer is only going to have four threads, not four real cores. And we got to leave a little bit of overhead there for the operating system to be able to use some of that. Industry follows competitors. The software industry has to react to what the hardware industry is doing at any given time. Over the last 10 years, the software industry hasn't had to do anything because Intel hasn't done anything. They have been releasing very minute steps of performance increase every so often, but they haven't given us anything new. So software engineers and software developers haven't bothered to code for it. It doesn't matter how much AMD tried to play up and get people to realize CPUs needed more cores because Intel didn't get on board. And with Intel not getting on board, AMD's original statement all those years ago with Bulldozer and Piledriver got pushed off into the future. Because Intel didn't go with it, and Intel had more of the market share at that point in time, software engineers were like, well, why are we going to code for 20% when we can code for 70 why are we going to code for 30% when we can code for 70? They're not going to take the time to do it. Why? It's not cost effective for them. But all of a sudden now, 
and this